Here's what's coming up on today's show. Cowboys injury news, notes and updates. The play calling issues, what's going on there, what could change. Offensive line does have some concerns, folks. And your defensive problems, because let, let's be honest, nobody's exempt from criticism after that god-awful Week 5 effort. If you are still mad about the loss, and maybe you would like to be able to show Jerry Jones that the owner should be tripping a little bit right now, then everybody type in mad in the comment section. Do it for me right now. All right, injury news. This one's not great. Kevante Turpin feared slash believed to have suffered a high ankle sprain that would likely sideline Turpin for somewhere from four to six weeks. The bye is in that grouping, so he might not have to go on injured reserve, but that is a significant update on the Turpin front. He had been finally utilized on offense. For all of the issues I have so far this year with the Mike McCarthy offense, he did do a better job of getting the ball to Kevontae Turpin. 11 touches, 66 yards on the ground, 51 through the air, two total scores. Turpin was a, a much bigger part of this offense. Offensively, maybe you can use some of those plays for Brandon Cooks now. Get him going a little bit. Michael Gallup is going to remain in his role. Jalen Tolbert probably gets a few more snaps. Maybe some of the Deuce Vaughn stuff can be, you know, he can replace Turpin on the offense side of the football. But your big loss here, frankly, is going to be on the special teams area. So the new kick returner will be Rico Dowdle. You know, 20 carries, 80 yards so far on the ground. Kind of bobbled the one kick, but I think he'll end up being okay. So Dowdle will be back there on kick returns, and it should be Deuce Vaughn then on punt return. So reality is that is a downgrade uh, in both areas that neither player is the same level of dynamic game-breaking threat that Deuce Vaughn or that Kevante Turpin is. More special teams injury news, by the way. CJ Goodwin suffered a torn pectoral. That's probably going to require surgery. That's the report at least. And it's going to end his season as well. So that's a core special teamer who's out for the year. He will eventually go on IR and then we'll eventually replace him. Maybe Deshaun Wright ends up being that guy. Probably give uh, you know uh, Eric Scott some run at some point on special teams. He's been healthy scratch all year. So those two guys actually played well for you against the Niners. So I'm okay doing this here. Type in 9 for Turpin and 29 for Goodwin to show those two some love despite their unfortunate injuries. It's the pinned comment on today's show, so if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage. Head down there and go vote. Some late developing news. All this actually filmed after we had filmed everything as part of our live show, but Leighton Van Der Esch, we have details, and it's not good on his neck injury. Expectation is an IR stint. Injured reserve stint is coming for the Cowboys starting linebacker, that is a sizable loss for the Dallas Cowboys. Unclear when he could potentially come back, but your signal caller on defense is going to miss time. That's bad. The neck injury, x-rays were negative, still going to miss time. Probably means a muscle thing, and that's really concerning for a player who has had a history of neck issues and for a team that has, like, no other linebackers on the roster. Uh, Damone Clark... Is next man up. He's going to be your number one linebacker. I think he'll give Micah Parsons some more linebacker run, you know, out of desperation, but you still need him to blitz on passing down. So what can you do there? Marquise Bell will play, you know, linebacker, maybe run down. It's Micah back there with Damone Clark, but that's a bad loss. You got to find somebody as a veteran. Maybe Malik Jefferson's your call up. You bring back Jabril Cox. We will get to some replacements later on in the week on Tuesday. Donovan Wilson also left the game with an ankle injury. No details known on that front, so we'll wait and see. And then one minor one, you probably saw Dak getting that, that throwing th middle finger taped up, which was what I thought about the entire game from that one. Uh, he had his finger stepped on, he said. He said it didn't bother him. Not a reason or an excuse for those second-half interceptions because it did happen before the touchdown throw, so... Wasn't an issue there, despite a god-awful performance out of your, uh, your overall team in that one. Now, today's show is made possible by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, the pros, the sharks, etc., you just pick more than or less than on two to six 
player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It's simple to play. You can make a, a, a few picks and submit an entry in less than 60 seconds. One minute. I mean, you spend a lot more on the toilet, I'm sure, time-wise. Prize Picks is the largest independently owned DFS, that's the Daily Fantasy Sports Platform, in North America. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Link will be in the comment section and the description. Again, that is prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Let's talk various rumors, mostly speculation ideas out there. Is it time to make Brian Schottenheimer the play caller? I will give this two stars. I'm not going to do it this week, but it is something we have to prep ourselves for an, a long, in-depth conversation this week and next week, especially if things do not go the Cowboys' way against the Chargers, against the old offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore. The offensive rankings this year. Eighth in points per game. They're 17th in yards per game. They're 12th in EPA per play. They're 13th in success rate. And the red zone's been terrible under Mike McCarthy. That is a stark downgrade from what the Cowboys were last year. They were a top 10 offense last year. They are not this year. And we know the points per game is inflated by a few uh, defensive touchdowns. And they've, we haven't really seen the full offense yet. Like it's, I still don't know 100% what this offense is going to be. Because it was a blot against the Giants in bad weather, a blot against the Jets, down three starters against Arizona, excuse, not a reason, blot against the Patriots, and then you got shell-shocked by the 49ers in a game that was pretty much over by the, by the third quarter. I mean, you had a 5% win probability before you had your second turnover. that The game was over. But the offense looks worse. There are changes that have been made, I think, for the negative. And what did we talk about before the year began? If something goes wrong on offense, there was one major change that had the potential to be the reason for it. You have a new play caller in Mike McCarthy. He's changed the offense, and it's not working right now. It's not good enough. Look, you, you weren't good enough against the Niners previously. Don't get me wrong. But you were worse this time around. I thought you were close last year. Quarterback plays better, you win. Quarterback could have played better, and I still don't think you win because everything else was terrible. That's a real concern for me. I don't trust this, this play caller. I don't trust this head coach right now. Do you believe in Mike McCarthy as this team's head coach and offensive coordinator? Why for yes and for no? Sound off in the comments section. Next up, we need to have the Terrence Steele conversation here. I'm giving this one three stars. You know, overlooked because of all the injuries up front along the offensive line. I've been fairly disappointed by Terrence Steele. Two sacks allowed this year, five hits, seven hurries. His PFF run grade, where he's been so good, ha has regressed. Five flags, by the way. Like, that's that's not good. That's just not good enough. Like, and not only that, like, the hits are high because when he's gotten beat, He's gotten beat kind of quickly. That's a real issue. That's a real problem. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm not, maybe he's just not healthy from the injury yet, but he's got to get better. He has to get better. Overall for the offense here, what is your concern level for what the Cowboys are doing slash have done so far? Scale it for me from one to 10. One, no concern, everything's fine. 10 being you're in full-on meltdown mode. Fire the quarterback, fire the coach, fire the OC, cut out the players at the 10. Go vote in the comments section. Next up, changes it at safety. You know, it pains me to say it. Yeah. Um, I have said this is the best safety room I've ever seen in, in, uh, in Cowboys history. You got to make some changes. They're not playing well. They're not. The, the, the two games you've lost, your safeties have been bad. It's three stars for me. We have to have this, this conversation. I think Lee Hooker's been fine as kind of your deep safety. He missed one play but made one too, so kind of evened out there a little bit. Donovan Wilson back from injury. Hasn't been that good. And I, I've said before that I think Jaron Curse kind of like the heart of this defense from a leadership perspective. Look, he's been bad. 
he's been really bad out there. Like, he, he's making big mistakes each game. He, he's not fitting his assignments right. He's not sticking with, with, with uh, tight ends. Like, Kittle scored three times on this defense. They weren't all matchups against tight ends. They, they dinged the one for Jordan Lewis on the play where, you know, kind of just snuck behind him on the, the wheel route fake play, which was a fun design, by the way. But Donovan Wilson missed three tackles. J. Ron Curse on a key third down just lines up offsides. Uh, that, 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 is, that is grade school shit. You, how, how are you a safety and you're lined up offsides? Look to the right. Look to the official. You can't do it. I think you have to play Wanye Thomas more. I, I think you have to. He, he's made some plays for you. I don't think he's the savior necessarily, but just doing the same stuff on defense isn't, isn't going to fix things. Like It's, it's, it's not going to make anything better. Uh, it, it just, it's the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. You have to make some adjustments here. I, I had said you, want, uh, you should pay J Curse right now. I'm, I'm glad you didn't because he's not worth it at this moment. He has to be better. He, he can complain on Twitter all he wants. He has, to, he has to be better. All right, let's talk pass rush here. The game script did not go their way, so I'm not going to melt down over it, but uh, they didn't do that much, did they, against Brock Purdy? A lot of open pockets, a lot of open wide receivers, two stars on this one. Uh, I'll, I'll, we'll give one defensive player some credit. I do think Osa Odigizua actually played pretty well. He had four pressures against the not great Niners interior offensive line. But uh, Lawrence Armstrong, two pressures. Tank Lawrence, two pressures. Chauncey Golston, two pressures. Uh, can we, do we need an, an uh, APB out on Sam? Williams, where, where's he been this this year? I thought breakout year. I haven't seen anything from him. What's what's going on there? By the way, Micah Parsons, come on. You 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 had almost as many jersey swaps as you had as you had pressures in, in that game. That's not good. And I, I'm still mad at Micah's post game comments of oh we're we're close to the scores. In fact, yes it is. You lost. There are no losers. Oh, yes, there are, Micah. You had two pressures in that game, and the first thing you do in post game is swap in jerseys with Christian McCaffrey. It's a bad look. Like you should be mad about that one. I certainly am. I'm disappointed. The defense and Dan Quinn are not exempt from this conversation. We I get that we all love them. That's fine. They they've been bad in both your losses too. I, I got to be honest about them as well.